How's it going, guys? Thanks for checking out this video. We're going to take a look at the 2024 fighter playtest from playtest packet number seven. We'll look first at the fighter table. This review is going to look at the changes of the fighter from the 2014 to the 2024, not necessarily changes from the last playtest. So here on the fighter table, we have second wind having its own column because it gets multiple uses now. Two at the start, three at fourth level, four at 10th level. Weapon mastery, of course, is all new. Uh, with a maximum of six uses by 16th level. In the features table, we have Weapon Mastery new, Tactical Mind is new, Tactical Shift, Master of Armaments, and Studied Attacks. Starting equipment for a fighter is 175 gold pieces worth of equipment. There's not the parallel options of chain or leather plus longbow. Instead, it's just the chainmail option. Proficiencies, of course, we have one added proficiency, that being Persuasion. And then at level one for the fighting style. It's a feat, of course, in the new uh, rule set. And whenever you gain a fighter level, you can replace the feat you chose with a different fighting style feat. Second Wind, you use this feature twice. You gain one expanded use when you finish a short rest, gaining all expanded uses when you finish a long rest. So basically a short rest or, or a second wind every short rest plus one additional to start during the day. So that's going to make the fighters much more resilient across the span of a day. Weapon Mastery being all new, and when you finish a long rest, you can practice drills and change one of the weapon choices. Action Surge, they took out the magic action. So uh, a fighter is not an optimum choice like it often was for getting extra spells cast. Level 2 Tactical Mind, this is all new. If you fail an ability to check, you can expend a use of your second win, and rather than regaining hit points, you roll a d10 and then the number roll to the ability check. I'm not a big fan of all... Classes getting better and better and better at never failing skills. So I'm not a big fan of this this here. If the check still fails, you don't even use your second win. So you always have that D10 until you uh, use it up to make a check. Tactical shift. Whenever you activate your second wind, you can move up to half your speed without provoking. So that'll make combat a little bit more dynamic. So that's fun. Indomitable. The bonus is equal to your fighter level. So here's more ratcheting up of the class character powers where you know fighters won't make a failed saving throw pretty much. Master of Armaments at level 9. This is where you can choose any of the kinds of mastery weapon you're using and replace a mastery property of each with another mastery property. The change is in for you when you finish your next long rest. Studied Attacks. You make an attack roll against a creature and miss. You have an advantage on your next attack roll, so more not missing, not failing skill checks. And it's interesting, too, because this all kind of stacks up as characters get up to levels in the 10s and higher, where they don't often miss anyway, and they have multiple attacks anyway. Where they really need the stuff to, you know, make the game a little bit more fun is at first level, where people are just, you know, half their turn, oh, I miss, next. Which I know MCDM is doing a lot of work in that regard, and it's interesting. I'm watching what they're doing there for always hitting with attacks, and you just vary how much damage you do. Anyway, all this um, extra stuff for the fighters and such is just going to make the monsters need to be stronger and stronger. Battlemaster. Level 3 Battlemaster, Student of War. You used to gain one tool of your choice, then you got a tool and a skill. Level 7, Know Your Enemy. This kind of wasn't hardly ever used. Now, uh, as it's a bonus action, you will know whether a creature has immunities, resistances, or vulnerabilities. It's pretty good power. Uh, once you use it, you can do so when you finish a long rest. Also, you can restore use of it by expending a superiority die. Improved combat superiority the same. Relentless. Basically, you never run out of superiority dice. At least once per turn, you can always use a d8 superiority die even if you're out of all others. Okay, the maneuvers. A few came in from Tasha's, pretty much unchanged from, from how they appeared in Tasha's. Commander Strike. This replaces one of your attacks to direct one of your companions to strike. Doesn't require a bonus action anymore from you, so that'll get more use. And throughout, you'll see they replaced one weapon attack. Now it always says uh, one attack with a weapon or arm, an arm strike. Disarming attack, and a few others here. It used to say a weapon attack, now it's just an attack. So if you're a spellcaster, multi-classing battlemaster, you can use it for any attack. Weapon, unarmed, spell, anything. Evasive forward now lasts until the end of your turn, instead of the end of your movement. Goading attack, another one of those that's on any attack. Lunging attack, this changed quite a bit. It used to be where it gave you basically spend a die, increase your reach for five feet, and then add a die's damage. Now, you don't get that functionality anymore which could come in handy. Instead, you have to move at least 10 feet, but it does give you the dash action as a bonus action. So there's a trade-off there, and I think in general it's about equal power, I guess. The dash could be a lot more functionality, though. Maneuvering, menacing on any attack. Parry, you can use strength or dex instead of, I think it was just dex before. Precision attack, now doesn't trigger till you know you missed. 
I kind of like that with all the powers. Again, ratcheting up the, the power of all characters, though. Pushing attack, using a weapon or an arm strike for that. Rally. This wording changing here, it means the same thing, I think, effectively. Choose a friendly creature you can see or hear. Uh, choose an ally of yours. They gain 10 hit points. It used to be equal to your charisma, which a lot of fighters didn't have much charisma, but now it's intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. Still probably low on all, all counts for a fighter. Uh, repost with a weapon or an arm strike. Sweeping attack. Melee attack using a weapon or an arm strike. Trip attack. Another one of that. And that's it. That's the battle master. Next is the brawler. So the brawler is all new. And it says here on the sidebar in the 2024 Dungeon Master's Guide, it will include match games that enhance unarmed strikes and improvised weapons. Unarmed expert, you roll a d6 for unarmed strikes, or d8 if you're not using a, another weapon or a shield. Improvised expert, you're proficient with all improvised weapons, and you can basically give them properties, light, throne, reach, or throne. And with those properties, you can give them mastery properties. Sap, slow, vex, cleave, push, or topple. Grappling expert. You make one unarmed strike as a bonus, and that one unarmed strike has to be a grapple or a shove. Notice it doesn't have to be as part of an attack action. So you can do that when you're doing other things besides just attacking. In addition, at the start of each of your turns, you deal D6 budgeting to one creature grappled by you. So it's interesting that it has no modifier. I think it doesn't have a modifier anyway, uh, based on your strength or your dex. Level 10, Dirty Fighting. You have advantage on attack rules made with improvised weapons and unarmed strikes against a creature grappled by you. Improvised Specialist. You hit a creature with an improvised weapon, you can add your proficiency bonus to the damage roll, and the damage die of your two-handed improvised weapons becomes d12. Uh, attack with an improvised weapon, you can use two mastery properties. Unarmed specialist. Unarmed strikes improve to d8. If you aren't holding any weapons or a shield when you make your attack rolls, d8 becomes a d10. All right, that is the brawler. Next comes the champion. The simple basic subclass for a fighter, the champion. So on level three, your improved critical can be with weapon or unarmed strike. That's new. At level 3, you have Remarkable Athlete, which comes from level 7 before, and it just gives you advantage on initiative and strength athletics, no longer on decks or con checks. And your running long jump increases by your strength modifier. Level 7 additional fighting style, down from level 10. Level 10, Heroic Warrior. During combat, you give yourself heroic advantage whenever you start your turn without it. So more, you know, always have advantage on attack rolls. Level 15, Superior Critical. Your attack rolls with weapons and unarmed strikes can now score a critical hit on a roll of 18 through 20. And finally, level 18, Survivor Defying Death. Advantage on death saving throws. When you roll an 18 through 20 on death save, you gain the benefit of rolling a 20 on a death save. And the last of their subclasses for fighter is the Eldritch Knight. I like what they've done here with the Eldritch Knight. Um, whenever you get a fighter level, you can replace their cantrips. That's not the specific thing I like. Uh, preparing spells level 1+. plus. Uh, whenever you use that number of spells you know increases, you can take from any wizard spell. It's only at first level that your spells have to be from Abjuration and Evocation. Changing your spells can be from any wizard spell list. Spells are prepared rather than, of course, known, like they are on the old tables. No, no changes in spell slots. War Bond is just renamed a version of the Weapon Bond. War Magic you take the attack action on your turn, you replace one of the attacks with the casting of one of your wizard cantrips with a casting time of an action. So that's nice. Elder Strike the same, Arcane Charge the same, and Improved War Magic basically the same thing as level 7, except it can be a spell as a casting time of an action. So those are my thoughts on the fighter. I think they went a little bit too hard on tweaking them to make sure they don't ever miss and make sure they don't make skill checks. And they got a lot of second wins and a whole lot of weapon mastery. All right, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of the 2024 Fighter Playtest.